Wow. Incredible strength here. So we're reacting to Lomachenko's training methods, something that a lot of people have been asking for, something that I'm really excited for. It's got some uh, unique training methods. So we're going to have a look at his footwork. We're going to have a look at his breath work. We're also going to be looking at some of uh, his ways to get stronger and more explosive. So we're going to start off with the agility ladders for footwork. Lomachenko is a king of footwork, so he's doing something right. And you see him doing these agility ladder drills quite a lot. Now, agility ladders get a, a bad rap in strength and conditioning, whether that's somebody working in football or rugby or American football. They use it in sport-specific context, but it doesn't actually look like the sport. So in that way, I can see why agility ladders get a bad rap. However, in this context here with boxing, at Boxing Science, we use the agility ladders quite a lot to create that speed and intent and to challenge coordination that can then transfer into boxing specific footwork. In our testing, we test something called reactive strength index. We use a 10 by five pogo hop test. And what we find is that boxers lack in reactive strength, even though it's very, very uh, important for attacking in defensive movements and creating power from the foot all the way through to the fist. From this pogo hop test, we calculate reactive strength index from flight time divided by contact time. And what we find is that boxers actually lack in the contact time. So their contact time is quite great. So this shows that they uh, struggle with that eccentric absorption to be able to control force and then reproduce force in a fast and explosive action. So when we're doing plyometrics, we find it quite tough to create shorter ground contact times. Now using the agility ladders, you can see with Lomachenko here, very, very short ground contact times. The ladders create that speed and intent there. Pair this with more intensive plyometrics, such as like pogo jumps or depth jumps, you can see real gains in reactive strength. So we're big fans of agility ladders. We don't do any fancy drills. We do like stuff like the Ollie shuffles, going from left to right, or doing ins and outs, or slaloms. But just doing simple exercises, using agility ladders to create that speeding tent to help reduce that ground contact time. So we're big fans of agility ladders, as long as it's used in the right way. Okay, so the Olympic ring press-ups, great exercise, but oh, can end up being quite <laughs> problematic. I like the concept, but actual transfer into a boxing setting, can be quite problematic as Lomachenko is showing there. Let's look at the benefits first. Being in that neutral grip position is a good way for a boxer. What they struggle with is that internal rotation of the humeral head. If they're doing press ups quite wide, that will affect the tricep activation during a pressing action, but also will make it quite anterior dominant in, in terms of like in this anterior capsule of the shoulder here. Boxers are quite overloaded in this because of the thousands of punches that they throw every day. Now, with the Olympic ring press-ups, this creates an increased demand, uh, challenging wrist strength and wrist stability, but the Olympic rings can end up being quite tough for boxers to just go in and go, right, Lomachenko's doing this, so I'm going to do this. So what I'd say is to build it up, starting off with like something from neutral grip, whether that's uh, press-up handles or using like some dumbbells, and this is getting the benefits of, of that neutral grip, making sure that it's more shoulder friendly and increasing that tricep activation. To increase the demands on this, you can do this banded. So wrapping a band around the hands around your back to increase that demand, acceleration demand. This will transfer into faster and harder punch. You can use weight plates instead of the Olympic rings uh, to challenge wrist stability and wrist strength. But what you're sacrificing here is that rate of force development, that speed. So the problem that Lomachenko has here in terms of like a, a strength conditioning element, you know, we're wanting to increase the rate of force development. So even when we're doing heavy loaded exercises, we're wanting to perform that fast. So we're producing force fast and that'll transfer to the punch. Because there's a balance element there and it's on the Olympic rings, it's having to go a little bit slower. Probably a good assistance exercise, I wouldn't use it as a main lift. With the press ups on the, on the neutral grip, uh, using the dumbbells or using it with a band, we're looking to explode on the concentric action. That's a limitation to this, an effective exercise. I'd say to use the pressing and optimize adaptations for the pressing. And if you're wanting to do wrist strength and wrist stability exercises, look to do them in isolation. You can try this and do it in assistance exercise, but make sure that you start building up. Do it from neutral grip, do it on plates, and then give it a go with the Olympic rings, but approach this with caution.
So a quick break to tell you more about who we are and what we do. We're Boxing Science, we're specialists in sports science in boxing and we're based in the UK. We've worked with over 300 boxers from amateurs, professionals and even world champion athletes. We're specialists in strength conditioning, nutrition, psychology, physiology and also movement training for boxing. If you're wanting to find out more about our methods, we've got a range of different content on our YouTube channel. So if you're not a subscriber yet, hit the subscribe button for more content. But also we've got our range of programs on the Boxing Science website, including the Train Life Champion membership, where you can access the blueprint to elite performance for just £19.99 per month. If you're wanting more information, the link is in the description. Now let's kick on with the video. Incredible strength here. If you thought that using two gymnastic rings were impressive, Lomchenko's just blown it out of the water, just using a single one, doing single arm press-ups. Watching this video clip, I think he's just doing it for show, but let's talk about single arm press-ups just in general. Using single arm work in boxing is really important. The reason why is because you'll see a lot of imbalances between your lead hand and your backhand. How many times you throw your lead hand compared to your backhand, whether that's on the bags, on the pads. Think about if you're just like jabbing the bag, just moving around, it's probably going up towards a three or even, even four to one ratio between how often you use your, your lead hand and you do your backhand. So when you're in the strength conditioning, it's important to highlight kind of imbalances between left and right, then start implementing some single arm work. When you're doing single arm press ups, you have to have a really wide stance you can see that Lomachenko is, is leaning to the side and also it's a very slow action. Like I just said about the Olympic ring press-ups, you're wanting to try and create force fast. If there's a balance element to this, you're going quite slow. So the transfer to the sport is quite minimal. So instead of doing something like this, doing some single arm pressing, whether that's from a bridge position, a single arm bridge position where you're doing, uh, where you really challenge that balance and that posture whilst doing a single, press, single arm pressing movement, and then just doing a, a, a simple single arm dumbbell bench press, strengthen the imbalances between left and right, but will also have a better transfer to your boxing performance. This gets a lot of attention across social media, holding his breath underwater. Now it's reported that he can hold his breath underwater for four and a half minutes, which is, that's incredible. There isn't that much research on the ability to hold your breath, having a transfer into improving your fitness. And Lomachenko actually says in this, it doesn't really improve his fitness, improving his psychological, his concentration, his perceptual control and breathing in a fight. You know, breath holds are becoming more popular in MMA and that's kind of translating into boxing as well. There isn't that much research on it at the moment. Again, it might be more perceptual control. If you are doing breath holds at the minute and it finds that that's working for you, then keep on doing it. If you're thinking, oh, that, that's something that I might start implementing into my training, focus on the 10% first, making sure that you, you've got your programming in the right way, recovery, making sure that you're attacking the right conditioning stimulus and everything like that, rather than thinking, right, I need to start trying to do holding my breath. Especially, don't try this at home, making sure that if you are trying it, it's under supervision. There's obvious dangers for, for doing this, what Lomachenko is doing. So don't try this at home uh, and then try and find something that, that works for you. Okay, so Lomachenko here using the Power Breeze system, proud partners with uh, at Boxing Science. And we actually had a, a presentation on the Power Breeze system by Duncan Kerr on the Boxing Science Conference. I was really impressed with the system that they have. Really break it down is what the Power Breeze actually does. It's, it's like dumbbells for your diaphragm. It's getting the diaphragm strong, it's getting the intercostal muscles strong to improve your ability to breathe. And in this presentation, Duncan shared an interesting study on uh, how the Power Breathe helped improve cyclists. The control group and the study group, so the control group just did 108 minutes of training. The study group that did 28 minutes of training, but used a Power Breathe system to train the inspiratory muscles, they both improved by 5%. So they both got the same results. Using the Power Breathe trainer was more efficient because they only had to do 28 minutes of training and then do the inspiratory training muscles. So adding this to your training camp can get them passive adaptations. You know, Lomachenko looks like he's doing this in the morning or in between training sessions, and he's just gaining them like one, two, five percent in his fitness. So this machine is obviously quite expensive, quite high tech. An alternative, a cheap alternative that can be taken anywhere, the Power Breathe Plus. And these are a few little techniques that Duncan shared the Boxing Science Conference for you to help improve your, your breathing rate. 
is it core? Or it is core. Yeah? yeah, it's core training. Okay. Think of it as a think of it as a core training device, effectively. But you, you're using your intercostal muscles to expand your ribcage and your diaphragm, mm. and then the other muscles that you've got. Uh, muscles that run parallel down your spine as well and the muscles that connect to your lower back. Okay, cool. So right, keep it in your mouth this time and do three or four breaths consecutively so you get into that kind of a bit of a rhythm. But take your time breathing out, squeeze all the air out and then as hard as you can on the way in. Yes. That was that much was, better but, that was but you didn't do the volume. It was good at the beginning yeah. but you didn't do the volume. Okay. Lomachenko is known for his brain training, his mental training. He was probably one of the first people to be seen like doing like these reaction drills. What is he like mid thirties now? That won't have like a massive transfer into, into his boxing. I believe like instead of reaction time, anticipation, experience, decision making, it's all really important in boxing. Something that really affects reaction time is fatigue. More focus towards improving your fitness can actually have a better effect on reaction time than these kind of drills here. I think that reaction time under fatigue and concentration under fatigue can be trained using something like the blaze pods in between intervals, like on the on the treadmill or on the air bike, getting blaze pods out or doing like something like number grids can help improve your concentration. Whilst you're fatigued, then that can transfer into boxing into them later around so you can anticipate, you can concentrate, you can uh, make the right decisions rather than it being more focused around reaction time. Lomachenko also uses number grids. I think this is a useful tool, but it does this like just as brain training exercise, but this is something that you can actually bring into the gym. So if you haven't got the budget for, for blaze pods or you don't have access to them, just printing off some sheets, doing some like number grid work uh, in between sets challenging that concentration and decision making under fatigue in scenario. Straight arm, straight leg sit-ups, a popular exercise on the Boxing Science program. I probably use this with every single boxer in every single program, whether it's a beginner or an advanced athlete. It's a fantastic exercise to challenge the core in a functional setting and it's a perfect alternative to traditional sit-ups. So a traditional sit-up, we see a lot of trunk flexion, a lot of spinal flexion, this isn't great for posture. Whereas this is challenging hip flexion with a neutral posture. So this is fantastic to target the abs whilst being quite safe and more back and posture friendly. With this drill is overloading that straight arm straight leg sit-ups with kettlebells. We normally use the plates. We can use kettlebells. If you're wanting to uh, like challenge your obliques a little bit more, you can do offset so you can just use a single kettlebell. And what Lomachenko is doing here is, is providing a little bit of a hip bridge at the end. There's some pros and some cons to this. The pro is that it's keeping a straight posture all the way through the movement. It's not really getting any spinal flexion towards the end range of the movement. But as you can see, there's a little bit of a jerking action towards the end and his core is probably switching off. I like to keep the legs flush against the floor. So it's really challenging an athlete's core strength through the full range of the movement. Rep ranges on this between 10 and 12 reps towards the end of the session. Fantastic tool to strengthen up the abs. This is really interesting, parachute sprints. Something that we've actually used before. Resistance sprint training, really beneficial for increasing speed and acceleration, but also increasing the conditioning stimulus to this. It's also doing this on the beach as well, which I'll, uh, I'll mention in a second, but let's talk about uh, parachute sprint. Now this is something that we've actually used before uh, during uh, lockdown 2020 when we were preparing Jordan Gill for a fight we had no access to uh, treadmills especially the curved treadmill and we wanted to replicate our key conditioning method which is the muscle buffering sprint so 12 seconds on 48 seconds off and working on that repeated sprint ability that speed endurance this comes with like high risk of uh, getting an athlete sprinting fast on a flat surface. This is increasing uh, the hamstring activation, dealing with high forces through the joints and also doing this under fatiguing setting. So we needed something to just increase the stimulus of the lower body and also slow the athlete down a little bit to make it a little bit safer, but still targeting that conditioning adaptation. So we use the parachute to be able to do this and we, we knocked off around about 10-15% of Jordan's sprint time, which is the optimal for uh, speed and acceleration. 
but also increases RPE on them sprints as well. So it was a fantastic tool to use within that setting. Now Lomachenko is using it, it looks like he's using it for a similar concept, so that was repeated sprint. He's also doing it on the sand, which I think that pretty good. We don't have access to uh, that amount of sand in, in Sheffield in the UK. You know, that's increasing that lower body demand for a conditioning point of view, but also reducing the impact forces through the joints. Lomachenko has been really efficient with this technique here. So this is a really effective conditioning tool here that can really transfer into gains in speed endurance. Underwater boxing, Mamid Ali style here. I don't know what he's doing this for. He mentions in the clip that it's, it's good for his tendons. For tendon health, you need to overload the tendon a little bit. That's why we use isometrics. You know, doing isometrics in a, in a boxing specific setting, uh, we'll use the, the manual holds through straight arm and bent arm shots. We'll use the isometric holds against the wall as well. And we use this in a strength conditioning setting, but also use this as a, a pre a boxing session setting as well to protect the tendons and to increase muscle activation going into training. With these, I think this is actually, it's saving the tendons from the high impact forces. It's not really boxing specific, how he's throwing his shots, his feet are off the, the floor of the, of the pool, obviously it's weightless as well. I'm guessing that this is done for active recovery. Make active recovery is something that's not specific whatsoever. You can do some water aerobics, working range of motion of your hips, your shoulders, rotation, get heart rate monitor on, making sure that you're in them heart rate zones for recovery, doing swimming, something like that. You know, you don't need to do everything boxing specific. So this one, I don't really agree with. So I Lomachenko for that one. I don't see this being a, a useful tool for, for most boxers. So we've got some overhead med ball toss uh, exercise. Uh, I don't know what this is, underhand med ball throw. This must be right at the end of the day, it must be tired. The overhead med ball toss, useful exercise for kinetic chain sequencing, core strength, speed and power. It's actually used as a valid and reliable assessment for, for core function as it correlates to isokinetic uh, core strength. This is something that we actually use in our core training program. If you want to find out more about this, link is in the description. If it's a useful tool to assess core strength and power, obviously if you practice it more, it will have a huge transfer to it. So we do actually use this uh, at times at Boxing Science. Uh, we more do like med ball slams and rotational med ball slams because we haven't got the space to do the overhead med ball toss. We'll do this when the, the in the car park, when there's no cars in the car park and we don't have any accidents. And we do it before our sprint training sessions as it can actually have a transfer in that rapid kinetic chain sequencing, rapid hip extensions, and can transfer nicely into some acceleration drills. I think these look quite heavy, so you need the optimal loading. We use anywhere between five and 10 kilos. These look quite heavy here. And also he's doing it on sand, so that, that relationship with the floor is quite important to react from and push through the floor because it's not getting that, it's needing to compensate in different ways. On the underhand toss here, is having to use his body weight for momentum. On this one here, uh, the overhead med ball toss, is actually having to go into excessive spinal uh, extension. So not utilizing that core strength. So useful exercise, few little tweaks that you can do to make sure that it's optimizing adaptation and transferring into boxing performance. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this episode of Boxing Science Reacts on Vasil Lomachenko's uh, training methods. They're pretty unique. There's a lot of stuff that can be tweaked and transferred into your training setting. And there's some of those that are, are pretty out there. You might've seen them before. You're thinking, I agree with it, but how can I put that into my training setting? Hopefully that video has given you some alternatives and some breakdowns that you can start using that into your training. So you can start getting the, the body and mind of one of the pound for pound greats of the sport. I think Lomachenko is, is fantastic because He's really explored different training techniques and it's been a massive inspiration to, to boxing science to think outside of the box of stuff that can actually benefit a boxer's performance. These boxing science reaction videos have been getting some incredible numbers and also some fantastic feedback as well. Really happy with the response from you guys. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content, whether this reaction video or some of the workouts that we do with our athletes at Boxing Science. And if you're wanting us to react to a superstar of your choice, please leave a suggestion in the comment box below. 
and I hopefully see you on the next episode of Boxing Science Reacts.